July the 26th, 2025. Because you're looking at the current JPL model of Comet Atlas, the one everyone's talking about. And the, the I guess the media name is Atlas 3i, the eyes for interstellar object. One of only three, and this one is huge, twice the size of ISON, and that's still speculative. And ISON was about three and a half miles wide. This one they're saying could be seven miles or greater, okay? And ISON was huge. Many of you saw it as we tracked it back in 2013. Now, Atlas, the technical name is C2025 N1 Atlas. If you're going to look up this model, you're not going to get it by looking at this, um, the I3 designation. It Again, C2025 N1 Atlas. This is today's date. What you're looking at now, and this is important and for the rest of the video, is the fact that Atlas is the white dot. I'll try to get it up without messing anything up here. And this is the orbit of Jupiter in orange. It has already crossed that uh, orbit of Jupiter. didn't come close to it. And it's headed for the uh, crossing of the orbit of Mars. Then it's going to recross under it and go back out into space. Not at, This angle is deceiving because it's a very flat trajectory, if I can get this thing in here like this coming in from the left you see the white line up there to the left and then the going out under neptune to the right that's the path and so what you're seeing is this thing is coming in from they don't know where and the orbit um, excuse me the gravity of the sun is going to make this slight bend in it just like it does many other ones but it's moving so fast and it's so large that it's not going to wrap it around in a big loop like we uh, have seen others. Also, it's not as close to the sun as we've seen others. Many thought I sun would hit the sun. I said, no, it's going to shatter into a million pieces, and it did. But uh, I watched these very closely, and there's a way to pay attention to what's going on. But like I said, there's something a, a little different about it. It's not projected to hit our planet, and but some people are thinking, uh, even scientists, that it may not be a comet, maybe something uh, with some uh, form of intelligence. We don't know. But clearly here, we're not seeing it getting close to the, our planet, and that, that is not why I'm here anyway. What I'm, I'm talking about, or would like to talk about, is the fact that it's not acting quite right. Again, it's here. It's going to travel this way. It's coming slightly above our ecliptic. See it coming above the orbit of uh, Jupiter and orange, and then diving out through here. Again, this is the Earth. And as everything rotates, I checked it, nothing's really coming close to it. Uh, not even Mars at that point. Mars will be past it. But it is moving very quickly. Now, remember, it is inside the orbit of Jupiter. Let me show you a couple pictures. And by the way, there's something different on the specs to this model, too. I've watched too many. I noticed almost immediate like i said they discovered this i think around maybe the first well the first orbit on the data span was july the 5th and somewhere right in there is when they discovered it and this solution date in other words they're looking at the movement and everything was yesterday right there july 25th and uh, they went back and used the number of orbits in that span they're saying 872 and what they they can look at a slight curve in an object moving and then they backtrack that with computer software and everything and determine possibly what direction it came from right now this curve is that we saw um, as it comes by the sun that's a mathematical curve in other words it just we're not quite uh, sure of the size they do know it's traveling very quickly but uh, that curve again is a predicted curve so we'll just have to watch that but what's missing, guys, from this from this data is what's called condition code. If you, many of you have watched these uh, comets with me, usually listed right in this area, and it's from one or from zero to nine. Zero means they know exactly where it's going. Nine means the condition code is very uncertain, so they just eliminated it here. So we don't know if they're very sure or very uncertain. But the condition code is not. Will that change and they start listing it? Maybe, but I've never seen it. 
not listed. Just saying. Now, this is going back to Comet Ison. Many of you remembered. If you didn't, it was something to watch it. We had a couple of, we had Comet Lovejoy coming through and all of that. But uh, this was inside the orbit of Jupiter. I have, and I'll show you where I clipped the bottom of this image, uh, the text on it, and I'll pull it up next. But anyway, uh, you give, it's giving you some idea of uh, the distance and all, the size of the comb and everything, but it, you could very clearly see the tail. Normally they will have two tails, and this one did. You just can't see it in this image. This is the one that is the trail of the comet, but they will have another one that, it, like if it's going beside the sun, not pointing directly at it, at it, it will have an ion tail coming from the direct angle. It will be a less, it will be lighter and a little less distinct, but I, uh, you're not seeing it here, but it did develop a very nice one. But let me just pull up the text to, to show you uh, the description of this, these two images. Now, this is Eisen again, but it said at the time of the Hubble observation, that's the two blue images you just saw, the comet was 4.15 astronom astronomical units, or 386 million miles from the sun. Now, you're dealing with 4.75 AU, or Jupiter. You see what I'm saying? It's inside the orbit of Jupiter by quite a bit, actually. Said the comet was 4.24 AUs from Earth, or astronomical units, 394 million miles. But again, the, it was inside, just like Atlas is now, that orbit of Jupiter, and so we should be getting some of the same type images, especially with, they think now it's at least twice the size of ISON. And using the pretty much the same software I used in 2013, it's a little more advanced now, but it was looking deep into the center of Comet ISON, and I could tell that it was multiple objects because of the hot spots. But what I'm looking at here, this is Atlas. This was, uh, I, did, I did this, I think, yesterday. Anyway, um, there's no really tail to it. I've got the brightness slightly enhanced, and that's part of the glow in the rear. But guys, it is not showing uh, much of a tail at all, and it's as close, if not closer, that, as I sun was in those two blue images, and the tail was very clear. Let me show you a kind of a reverse, and we can look at where it's pushing the heat signature and things like that. And when you do the reversing and the different aspects of this, of, of any type of image, you can start to see different things that are basically hidden unless you filter away certain other things. And what I'm seeing here, this is the forward section of the movement of this object. Again, it's almost perfectly round and there's no tail. Again, so a lot of this is a little bit of glare because of intensifying it. I don't see multiple heat sections in this object. It's one round one. That's what I'm seeing, no tail. Why would that be occurring if it's twice as big as I sun and close, as close as I sun was during those pictures? Now, here's a Hubble picture of Comet. Again, they're calling it 3i Atlas. You know, you now know the real name. But uh, it's right here in the center. Now, you're seeing this scattered light around it, just like you were seeing in the images I was using. What you're seeing in these images is because they're focused on the movement, and so it's blurring the stars. You understand what I'm saying? You've got a blur there, and if it was all sitting still, you would be seeing the movement of Atlas itself. But again, this is Hubble. Now, let's take a look at some images, actual moving on this thing and what you're seeing right here is just a slight movement being picked up you see two bright stars here and here and coming down right through the center you see that that is atlas there's no uh tail it looks like the movement of an asteroid i've seen a lot of asteroids exactly like this um, through some of the other satellite images and again uh, that's what it looks like to me you, know, you get different information each day as this comet gets closer, whatever it is, it gets closer to the sun. And in this article, they're saying it's seven miles wide, the largest interstellar object ever seen. New photos uh, from Vera C. Rubin Observatory reveal. 
It says uh, detailed photos from the newly operational VRC Rubin Observatory has revealed that the recently discovered interstellar object 31 Atlas is uh, roughly seven miles wide, making it the largest of its kind ever seen. Now here's a list of some of the things that have been talked about, and uh, I'd like to add one for myself, and that was the one I just talked about, about the missing condition code from the actual uh, data from JPL for the comment. The condition code again, 0 to 9, 9 meaning highly uncertain of where it's going, 0 means they know pretty much where it's at. That entire section is missing first time ever. Anyway, here's what they do have was discovered July 1st by the Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile. It was confirmed as an interstellar object receiving the designation 31 Atlas. It is also known as C2025N1 Atlas, and that's how you look it up. They're saying it has an interstellar origin, and its a path indicates it originated outside of our solar system. It sure did. Tracing its path backwards suggests it may have come from the Milky Way's thick disk, which contains older stars. Commentary nature. Uh, observations reveal 31 Atlas is an active comet with an icy nucleus and a coma, a cloud of gas and dust. It shows, uh, or it shows indication of water and ice and silicate grains in its coma. That's a glow around it. Where's the tail? Then it's going to make its closest approach to the sun, or called perihelium, around Halloween, October the 29th, as a matter of fact, at a distance of about 1.4 AU, slightly further, guys, than the distance uh, between the Earth and the Sun. The Earth is 1 AU, and that's 93 million miles. And it will be, uh, again, inside the orbit of Mars. Its closest approach to Earth will be in December of 2025. It's coming in from our... If you're looking at the Sun from the Earth, you're looking west, right? Sun's coming in, that would be to your south. Right, yes, to your south. Now, as it gets closer to the sun, it's going to be harder and harder to see. Right now, they're getting telescope images of it, but when it gets some, close enough to the glare of the sun, it will be very hard to spot. It's going to go past it, not really around it. You saw a slight bend in that angle. And then as it gets further away after December into that area, you'll start to be able to pick it up in the night sky over to the right side to your right instead of the left. But again, they're uh, saying that it's about seven miles, they think, wide. Now think about this. These are the three interstellar objects that we know about. But it, we didn't start finding them till 2017 in October. Remember, it was at uh, Muamua, the first identified interstellar object discovered October 2017. It exhibited an unusual elongated shape and a reddish hue, similar to objects found in the outer solar system. Its trajectory and high velocity confirmed its interstellar origin. Despite its close pass by the sun, it lacked a cometary tail. That's what I'm saying. It looks more like an asteroid now to me, but it's bigger than uh, these objects. Uh, Let's see, it says it lacked a tail, which led to initial classifications as an asteroid before observations of non-gravitational acceleration pointed towards it behaving more like a comet. Its exact nature, uh, nature remains a topic of scientific debate. In other words, they have no clue, but it was tumbling. It was not a comet. If anything, if it was completely natural, it was an elongated asteroid, big hunk of rock spinning. Then there was 21 Borisov, and this was up into 2019. The second interstellar visitor, uh, unlike Oumuamua, Borisov exhibited the characteristics of a comet, including a comma and a tail, when it approached the sun. Its path confirmed its interstellar origin. Now, here in July 2025, 3-1 Atlas, the third and most recently discovered interstellar object, Again, July of this year, this month, as a matter of fact. Initial observation suggests it is also a comet. It is much larger than the previous two interstellar objects, estimated between 4 and 5 kilometers, with the potential to be as large as 20 kilometers. Now, 
they're saying sub or seven miles and what is that about 11.1 kilometers something like that guys so it could be closer to 10 miles wide it was observed to be traveling at a remarkable speed further solidifying its interstellar origin then we don't know what it is yet some people are saying that's been some kind of strange movement and things like that when we get a little bit uh, closer to some of the observable uh, satellite images guys or, or telescope images we may know more about it as again it's uh, we've only known about it for 26 days but this is what i found out and it is amazing to me i don't think we're going to have any problem with it uh, striking our planet now coming up in I'd say let's see in the next seven years there are a couple of objects that could hit our moon and uh, what they're saying when that happens we will have a whole new meteor shower made up of pieces of the moon now what did I talk about last night in the video about the moon controlling so much the tides and the balance of the earth and then an impact coming from an asteroid that could shake it and hit it with the power of many nuclear bombs I may have let me see if I've saved that particular article hold on one second now this is one of the objects this one's called an uh, asteroid 2024 YR4 it's supposed to hit the moon on December the 22nd right before Christmas in 2032 so with that seven years earth could experience a rare meteor shower made entirely of moon dust astronomers at the university of western ontario have analyzed what might happen if the 60 meter wide rock that's this asteroid they're looking at slams into the lunar surface in a new paper they report that the impact would release energy equivalent to 6.5 megatons of tnt blasting a kilometer wide crater and ejecting up to a hundred million kilograms of lunar debris now talk about knocking the balance of the moon off slightly and how what will the, be the uh, concurrent effects on our planet tides and things like that but uh, things are coming i don't think um atlas has, we have to worry about it now, the only problem would be if it had a lot of objects with it. You can barely see it now from Hubble, but um, they have been known to have a de uh, what they call a debris trail. But that would be more affecting something besides our planet, possibly out into the Jupiter area, or probably later on in the orbit of Mars because of its path. But right now, we not, we're we not sure what it is, and it's going to be kind of interesting to keep an update on this thing going um, just to try to find out if we will ever know. We don't know what Oumuamua was yet, or maybe they do and they're not telling us. I've heard one thing that with both Oumuamua and Atlas is that it may have been some type of probe. Who knows? But we're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.